Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm going to make a very fun and special video about the sword in this box right here. Some time ago I did a AMA question answer ramble time video, and in that one of the questions was my thoughts on Huawei swords. Now I don't know if it's pronounced Huawei or Huawei. I'm going to probably bounce back and forth between the two in this video, honestly. But uh, inside this is a box, or it's not a box, this is a box. Inside this box is a sword from Sword Friend Scott. It's a newer example of a Huawei katana, and I can give you my thoughts on it. Now, sword Friend Scott has a YouTube channel. I'll link it in the description down below. He made a video about this particular sword already, so if you're interested in his thoughts or more video, or particularly more video of him cutting with it, which I think he does a pretty good job, and it shows the capability of this sword perhaps more than I'm going to be able to, uh, anyway, I'll link that video in the description down below. So just some caveats. This is not my sword. I do have to send it back from sword to Sword Friend Scott, uh, and, uh, and so I'm not going to break it. He gave me kind of the, the leeway to cut with it, to do some basic stuff with it, but I'm really just going to take it out of the box, give you my thoughts, take some measurements, share them with you, and that's, that's it. So this is, again, not my sword. I didn't have to pay for it, and hopefully whatever biases you think may be included in, in that statement, I guess now you know at the beginning. So without further ado, I'm going to open this, uh, this sword up, and I'm going to attempt to do it in such a way that I can reuse the box, and, uh, and yeah, oh, I totally did this. Okay. Well, sorry, Scott, I fucked your box up. Right, inside this box, there is another box. <laughs> I can edit out that part. Simple silk bag. Now, there is gonna be a little bit of cheating here because I watched Sword Friend Scott's video and so I have an idea of, of what this sword entails and I, I have an opinion about it, I suppose, already. Probably should have put that in the disclaimer section. Anyway, um, he's tied this around here in such a way that it's secure and whatnot. From my understanding, this uh, Sageo is not original to, to the blade. I believe this was added, but there are some other notable bits too. All right, sword friends, I'm gonna go soup to nuts, top to bottom, and kind of give you some, some general impressions. And the first thing I wanna start out with is actually the Fuchi right here. And, or not the Fuchi, this is the Kashra, I should remember the parts. The end cap, the pommel, the, the little bit at the bottom of the handle. And the thing is, I've seen these fittings before, and I don't know exactly where they're from. I don't know if it's from Tizando or Yamato Bidogu, or if it's some arbitrary fittings maker in Japan, or something like that. But I want to say I've seen them sold at Japanese stores, and, uh, and overall I like them. I mean, that's, it's not a downside. It is to say that Huawei makes uh, what hopefully is going to amount to be a good blade, but their fittings aren't terribly original. That said, they are providing what seems to be very nice quality fittings here. This is a wave theme, and the waves are detailed and nice, and I, I, like, I like the way they look. I like the theme. I like, how it's, I like how it's done. So I don't know if these are fittings purchased from uh, a fittings maker in Japan, or if they got some and are recasting them, or they're just emulating them. That said, I can make out little details in them, and I have to say that the casting quality is good. There are some downsides. The little shitadome here in the in the center bit of the uh, where the ito goes through are cast in. That's not bad. And again, it's not something to really nitpick in a sword of this price point. I want to say this is between three and four hundred dollars. I guess I can't exactly remember how much it was, uh, but it's not a terribly expensive sword. And very often these shitadome will be cast in at that price. Again, I don't know if, if anyone is really going to complain, bitch or moan about that. All right, I've turned the handle this way so that you can maybe make out the general profile. And I'm sorry for the lighting. It's not really cooperating with me here in such a way where you can make out all the wonderful details. If I bring a flashlight here, this black on black with blacky blackness is, uh, well, it is a cool theme. It is not one that is terribly easy for me to get on camera. Anyway, this will have to suffice. Uh, the point is that this theme, this fitting, is is shapely. It's working pretty well. I believe this is a special request from Sword Friend Scott to to get this type of handle. It's thin, and I don't know if it costs any more money or not, but I will say that they kind of achieved the goal. It has both a wasted shape uh, that has a very comfortable feeling. Now, I have big, giant sausage hands, but that does not mean I prefer the large axe handle shapes. I can accommodate them with my grip, but honestly, I prefer something a little more shapely, and I think this, this suits, suits suits me just fine as well. I really, really actually like the way this feels in my hand. I haven't gotten a chance to practice with it yet, but uh, at a glance and kind of with general gripping, uh, I would say that I do, I do like the shape. Uh, the Ito, I would actually say, is very tight for a mass production sword. And I'm not making out the seam along the side. Very often the panel or the edges or the Hishigami is not kind of bunches up around here. And I don't 
I don't really make it out. Overall, this is among the better wraps that I have seen. And yeah, nothing nothing is moving around. Even over the Manuki, it is it is very tight. And you can maybe make out I'm pushing with a reasonable amount of force and really they aren't they aren't budging at all. This uh, for for a sword in this price point is actually a pretty exceptional wrap. I I'm actually pretty pretty surprised by that. The knot down at the base is not loose either. Very often this is is loosey goosey. Just to give you a comparison, I'll show you an example of bad. So this is a, a Dynasty Forge handle from a previous video, and just so you can see, uh, maybe two equivalent swords next to each other we have the Dynasty Forge. And if I push on this, uh, you can see that it, it deforms and moves around a little bit. And it's certainly worse over the Manuki. Here, over the Manuki, I can press and it doesn't move with significantly more force. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't deform the same way. Uh, obviously, I had some problems. This Dynasty Forge may not be representative of every Dynasty Forge blade, but this particular one has, has loose Ito. And it's, it's not the worst, but it's certainly uh, this would be a, an example of exceptional workmanship for a sword at this price point out of a out of a Chinese forge. Now, that's not to say that smiths in China are incapable of exceptional work. That's not what I mean at all. But out of the many mass production forges that I have experience with out of China, specifically the Longchuan China, uh, very often the Koshirai is is a little bit hit or miss, and more more often that's where the misses are are at in comparison to the the blade perhaps. So I do think that they're capable of exceptional work. It's just that I don't often see it. Very often loose ito is common. And I would say that this is this is one of the better wraps that I have I have seen out of a out of a blade in China. It's very uncommon that it is uniform and tight, that the Hishigami lines don't uh, don't show up on here, that there's not unsightly bulges or or things that are misplaced. So there's a minor ledge here. Again, having not used this sword yet, there's a slight transition here that could be better. Uh, it doesn't feel like a particularly sharp edge, at least I'm not bleeding yet. Transitions along this side feel pretty good. Other than that, that would be the only kind of imperfection I can inherently spot kind of right out of the gate. The other thing I'll, I'll note is that the shape does seem just a little wonky. Or, well, at least I would say Koshi sorry. It seems like the handle the deepest part of the curve almost seems to be right right above the habaki area so it has something like a koshi sorry which isn't necessarily bad i'll kind of get a feel for it once i bring it out and move it around but uh, it does it does just have kind of a bit of an odd odd cant to it or just odd shape but that's handmadeness for you anyway overall i have to say i like the aesthetic i'm going to move on and i'm going to talk a little bit about the suba which just for a refresher, here's this slight ledge I was talking about. I'm going to mention the Suba. Again, this is a wave Suba. It, Suba. it reminds me of the one from Bouguet. Uh, again, it, it actually looks pretty nice. I don't spot any sharp ledges. It doesn't have the same level of detail that the fittings do, or rather the uh, the Fuchikashra, but it at least has some detail, and overall I find it to be a very, a very handsome Suba for what it is. In terms of how the blade fits, tension seems to be right you can push it in all the way it's very tense slides in and out doesn't rattle at all uh, overall the the fit level seems quite good i'm gonna continue with the side here for a bit all right so you can see that the horn area the koiguchi at least it appears to be made out of horn and it has kind of the wood liner in here it's not the most exceptional job but for what it is it seems it seems nice uh, the kurigata also seems to be made of horn i don't notice any cracking and it seems to be seems to be spaced about right as well generally speaking you when this rests in your in your belt you want about you know kind of a palm width over there so that the kurigata rests on the on the base of your palm so you can kind of find it and figure out if your side has turned the right direction um, and that you can kind of cover it up and hide the mouth of the, the scabbard as well. All right, some other notes on the scabbard. It seems to just be a simple red lacquered scabbard. I do spot some rippling in the surface. It's not perfectly smooth and it's mostly one tube. So one, one suggestion might be to have a little bit more taper in here. It's a feature I often find alluring. It does have what appears to be a horn kojuri at the end, which maybe will focus. I don't know that it's, it's bright enough in here, but it looks like it's it's a horn kojuri. Other than that, it's not particularly shapely, but it is shaped right. 
Kurigato's in the right spot, and it, it does all the things, and it doesn't rattle. So, again, for what it is, it seems to be pretty well fit. More thoughts. Before I get into the blade, I do want to point out this Habaki. Now, I believe Sword Friend Scott said that this Habaki came shiny like this or, or buffed like this. So it's one, a copper Habaki, which I like to see. Uh, very often, they're all brass Habaki, and it's just something that you get a little sick of seeing uh, the same the same looking habaki on on every sword. So this small bit of copper is as incidental as the change of material might be. I do find to be certainly a handsome addition, as well as the copper sepa. Um, maybe brass is a superior material for for what it's it's going to be used for. But I I happen to really like the the option for copper habaki, and it seems to be reasonably well fit. I don't know if this habaki is a custom variety or or what it is exactly. Uh, but it does have a slightly different shape and dimension than the than the average, and and for what it is, I again really really like it. All right, so here is the Kisaki right here, and uh, the Yakote is not exactly as refined as as I think it could be. But for a sword in this price point, honestly, uh, I am I'm kind of amazed by this this polish. It looks very good. Um, the Kisaki has a kind of weird Yakote spot, but again. This is not a terribly expensive sword, and it, it certainly has a polish that brings out some more of the details than many of the more expensive ones do. Now, one thing that I'm noticing is that the lines on here, um, along where the flats are, I can kind of notice that there's a slight haze along the Shinogi and Shinogi G, and that just basically the, the rims of the lines tend to stand out, which suggests to me that it underwent kind of a, a heavy bath of ferrol chloride or, or some sort of etching material to bring this out and then was kind of very loosely cleaned up so to speak that said it gives me the zazz that i would really like in a polish i can make out the yakote i can make out kind of the uh the boshi and hamon and uh and all of this is is really quite nice it has very you know clean lines i can make out some very uh minor metal banding in the surface as well anyway this is all in all um a very very handsome looking sword which hopefully my camera is bringing out in some detail and you're able to see some of what I'm what I'm seeing here, but overall, again, there's a lot of a lot of fun little activity in the surface of the steel here. Now, incidentally, uh, I know Sword Friend Scott has cut with this. I watched him do it, and while there are very faint lines in here, um, I would you know it almost looks like it hasn't been cut with, but it has. I saw him cut mats, and very often I have I have more scratching after a round of cutting than I than I'm seeing here. So. Well done. It feels feels very sharp. Here's a, a quick shot of the back of the Kasaki. I'm not seeing a particularly swelled edge or or a lot of attention to the lines on the Mune area. Uh, they look rounded and well, like just less less attention is paid. The surfaces. The Shinogi is, is wandering ever so slightly. I'm being very nitpicky about it because of the the other qualities of the blade, but overall this is this is very nice work. I'm gonna take it apart now. Alright, it's a little tricky to see what I'm doing here, but I'm taking this tool and I'm pushing on it, and I gave a little tap of the hammer beforehand. The pin came out pretty easy. I don't know if Scott has taken this apart or not yet, uh, but very often this is where things get rough. Oh, well, it budged. Okay. Worth pointing out that I've taken the uh, the handle off here. It was a little bit snug, um, but it did come off, and when it did, I don't see any cracks in the ska, which is which is ideal. And honestly, taking this sword apart is one of the main reasons I wanted to to take a look at this Huawei blade. Is I've seen this Nakago in some of their photos, and it is um, just better looking than most. And so I'm hoping that I can convey why that is. All right, so here is the Nakago, and what I'm seeing is, is certainly, certainly better. Okay, now it's maybe worth bringing up an example And I'm going to try not to get it too close because it's filthy. But this was a Kotaku Budo sword, and it's been sitting 
outside for a while and maybe I have a better example, but <laughs> this is actually, I think, better looking in a rusted state than, than it might have been uh, while, it was, while it was new and clean. The point is that what we're able to see here is one, these file markings right here. Now it looks like it's just done with a belt sander uh, and it likely is, but they're uniform and clean and there is a, a present uh, line in the center of the Nakago uh, and it doesn't waver around or just peter out. And so I would say that this is a very, very handsome looking uh, Nakago. It's rounded at the base rather than leaving kind of sharp jagged edges. There's a single Makugi and the hole, the rim of the uh, Makugi on our, this, this hole has been basically, I don't know what they're doing, but it has a, a tamfered edge or a slanted edge here so that there's not sharp jagged pieces. Very often it seems like these are just drilled in once the Nakago or the ska is put on and there are burrs on the end of this one. You can kind of hear it catching. If I push here, there's a ledge here. We're here, there's not. So the, basically it doesn't leave jagged unsightly metal ledges here. Uh, and if you don't spot the difference, that's that's fine. You don't need to spot the difference, but this is something I appreciate. There's some attention to detail put into the Nakago here, and that gives me the impression as a buyer that if they're putting this level of attention into the Nakago, when most people that buy these swords, I, I have a guess that very few of them actually ever take the handle off, it gives me the impression that they're probably putting that same level of attention into the other important things that you never see, like the heat treatment and all of the other bits that can make a katana special. So. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate it, and I think it's nice, and I'm going to show more of it. Anyway, I'm going to put this dirty, bad example away. Um, now, that sword that I'm putting away is, again, not a particularly good example of a Nakago, but uh, it's very common, and I would say that, well, that came from a sword that's like $100. It it's, can be found pretty in, in pretty equal measure amongst swords that are hundreds of dollars more. So, anyway, here we go. Here's the Huawei Nakago. It's not sharp here. The Hamachi Moonmachi area right here are off center. Um, I like to I like to see these these be kind of on the same plane, but they're not as far off as far off as they they often are. Things line up pretty well with the Habaki as well. Let's give maybe a closer look at this Habaki here. Now, one thing, small as it might be, uh, this Havaki as well is not full of crap. Um, you might say, why would it be full of crap? Well, very often they get schmutz and yucky bits and etchant and other stuff in here. Inside here, the, this this actually looks looks pretty clean, which is good. Uh, so there shouldn't be anything on here that's going to create corrosion and that kind of stuff. It can be hard to oil under the Havaki, again, if you're not taking the sword apart. Um, having, having something that... Uh, encourages corrosion near the base of the blade where you can't oil it is is not good. I've had a couple swords like that and it creates, um, it can create rust little spindles that start creeping up and, and you're wondering what you can do to fix them and you have to take the habaki off and clean it out. Anyway, I digress. Point is that this Nakago I think looks, uh, looks very, very good. And this is again on one of their less expensive swords I think. So uh, for what it is, it's, it's very, it's very pretty. It's not signed, but um, the attention to detail just with the uh, the belt sander that was that was used to make this is is really uh, a step above above average. I am sorry about the positioning of the lights and all of this wonkiness to the video, but uh, at this point, I think I just need to take it out and and move it around and hopefully cut some stuff with it. I just took it out of the box. I gave you my initial thoughts. I looked over the sword. I have to say, I'm I'm very impressed. The Ito, being as as tight as it is, is um, is is really quite good. This is a very handsome looking. Uh, uh, ska and and it feels good and the custom options seem good and Scott seemed pretty happy with their performance in terms of customer service and such. The Habaki is great looking. The Nakago is very pleasant looking. I really like the overall look of the blade. The lines seem clean. I mean, it's not it's not perfect. There are some you know cleanly issues that could be taken care of at least in terms of the polish. Uh, there are some minor you know, quibbles if you were going strictly for Seguha Hamon. But honestly, everything that I could bitch about is really quite small for what I believe this sword's price is, which is somewhere between three and $400. At that price, I think a lot of things 
are really quite desirable here. I, I like the fittings on the scabbard, as unoriginal as they are, they seem to be of a nice quality. It's nice and tight, it gives me the impression that this is gonna be a very long lasting sword and has some very attractive, you know, kind of under the hood things. Um, also, the blade is really pretty. There's no ripples or terrible things in the surface. The scabbard doesn't rattle. It seems to slide in and out pretty well without binding, though I, I need to figure that out. Anyway, first impressions, I would say I'm very, I'm very impressed with what, with what is delivered here for the money. It's a very handsome sword. It's very sharp out of the box, at least from what I can tell. Um, and I'm looking forward to using it. So I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna tell you I'm impressed right now. And I'm gonna go and swing it around and see if I can find anything else to bitch about. All right, actually I have to put the sword back together before I do. And one thing I wanna point out I spotted is you might be able to see this little white thing in here. And that is the uh, a little spacer inside here for underneath the Fuchi, and it's a little piece of what seems like paper or plastic or something like that. And it was very unobtrusive and put in here, likely to provide just enough tension and spacing so that this thing fits on here right and, and creates the right amount of tension for the blade. Um, I didn't even notice it, but it's it's well done. Uh, it's not something anyone would see. It's fine that it's it's there. I mean, ideally, I guess it's not, but it's, it's so small. And honestly, I, I can't say I mind it here. The fact that somebody had to put that in so that it felt right and took the time to do it at a sword in this, this price point, I think is overall, uh, overall a win. Uh, it would have been easy to, to not do that and to just hit it harder with a hammer or something like that. And they didn't. So very nice. So I don't know if this was actually here or not before. I have to apply pressure though. I could probably just hit the little peg harder. And there it is. I don't know how well the sound is gonna come out here right now, but there's a couple things that I think are worth pointing out. One, this is not terribly noisy. I'm able to achieve what I think is mostly, mostly silence. Uh, it seems not to quite glide on rails, but it's quiet and fit snug, doesn't fall out. I do notice that if I don't have the sword positioned correctly, it's sharp enough to bite in to the wood in here. So you gotta get it right, but once you have your alignment on, it goes in and that's a mark of, I mean, lots of swords do that. It's not a bad thing, it's just, the tip is sharpened enough to <laughs> to uh, to drain your scabbard of its useful lifespan if you don't have have if you're not trying to put it in at the right angle. Uh, it fits in well. I find it draws relatively nicely. It does no toe well. It's quiet. It doesn't rattle around. I haven't cut myself yet, which is nice. It's a reasonably comfortable scabbard and system to use. Also, I noted that. Nothing on here is biting my hands. I mean, it's not comfortable for me to do this, but it's not kind of a meat grinder either. Um, the, no, the handles are all very tight. I find this to be a very, still a little small for me, but a little, very comfortable sword to, to hang on to and move around. Now I'm gonna try and cut something with it. So audio permitting, some quick thoughts here. The edge is, is sufficiently sharp. Uh, you can see it bites into the pool noodles. This is, as strange as it might sound, very good performance for me. Uh, it bites into the pool noodles right away with minimum pressure. I don't even have to draw the blade across before it kind of pushes in. It's sharper in some spots than others, but all of it is really, really, really quite sharp. And it bites in, which is a good sign. These pool noodles are... Uh, <laughs> Granted, a bit of a joke to cut, but at the same time can be surprisingly challenging, as you as you might have seen. So the sword is certainly sharp enough to do it. I've seen Scott cut tatami mats with it, so I have no 
desire to really do that. Well, actually, I have a lot of desire to do it. It's just very cold, and the tatami mats freeze, and I don't have any soaked, and he wants it back. So, I think the point is, I'm not going to cut tatami, because I've seen him cut. It's obviously proficient in doing it, and it still has an edge to cut pool noodles pretty sufficiently. To me, it's a very sharp sword, and it's already kind of proven its merits in the ability to cut tatami. One thing that I don't say, think I particularly like about it is it's very quiet. I can't I can't for the life of me get it to make any sound. A little bit, but I can't hear it. Uh, so as a training tool, while it is certainly effective, I can't tell just in my general Iaido if if the if it's on or not. So that said, it's a handsome shaped sword. And as I have it in person kind of out of the box, you can make out this Koshi sword perhaps a little better where it slopes in this area here. All right, sword friends, I'm going to wrap things up while it is fresh in my mind. And first and foremost, I am noticing a little bit of fraying on the Ito. Scott mentioned that, I believe, in his video, so I don't think it's anything I did, but it's probably just material. And if it got much worse, it could be lacquered, and it's not, not the worst thing. Overall, though, as a practice tool, the negative first. Um, it didn't make a lot of noise. I couldn't get it to make the kind of wind sound, the swishy sound. It's tough to do. Though I'd imagine Huawei probably makes a few different shapes, and if it had a bohi or a reinforced kind of a thicker tip area, it would probably make that noise without a problem. But this one is, is pretty quiet, and I can't get it to, to make that sound. Uh, other than that, though, it was very comfortable. The lip that I bitched about earlier over here, this transition, didn't uh, didn't bite me. I also didn't realize, I didn't point out earlier in the review, there is a Manuki here, and it's of reasonable cast quality, though not quite the same level as the Fuchi. Uh, Kasher area and the transitions here actually line up uh, pretty well. So other things that are, I suppose, positive. Anyway, uh, grip-wise, it was comfortable to move around. I really like the feeling. Dynamically speaking, I'll put the Weapon Dynamics computer up. It's a comfortable experience. It's a shorter sword for me, so it moves pretty easy. Uh, the Mune is a little, you know, it's not as crisp and clean as it could be, but it draws nicely, it sheathes nicely, and as a training tool, this is really quite compelling. Very rarely do I get a sword like this that I would say is kind of on par with base level Iaido, uh, or Iaito, I should say, like the Japanese-made kind of aluminum alloy blades that you can buy from Tizando or Minnesota or something like that. And while the scabbard here does not offer the same experience in doing Noto and, and whatnot, it is still a very nice experience using as a training tool. It didn't make a lot of noise, that's fine, you could probably get one that does. Uh, the scabbard wasn't as nice, but the Ito is tight and the fit and finish and hold is, is really quite pleasant on the hand. Nothing bit me, it was quiet, it held well. Uh, overall, this is a sufficient tool to, to do Iaido with if that's, if that's your one of your proclivities. Uh, cutting, I didn't cut a lot with it, so I swung it around, but I'm not going to cut a lot with it. Scott has already cut with it, and I think this shown, this sword has shown its merits as a, as a tatami cutter in hands that aren't mine, and I think you can trust him. I will put a link to his video in the description down below. You should go and, and check that out. I cut a pool noodle. The edge bit in just fine, and it, it's a very sharp sword. It's sharp, and it looks nice, and it, if this is the edge that it came with out of the box, then it's better than most. It's, it's a, a very, very keen edge, sufficient to cut pool noodles, which may seem uh, like a silly target. They're not particularly challenging, but you have to have decent form and decent edge. Otherwise, they just flop over and pop back up like the wacky inflatable arm man. So uh, it's good, and I found this to be a very effective cutter. It might not have seemed like it, given how bad my cuts are, but overall, overall it actually did a pretty good job for me. Um, actually, in some of them, I was doing the upward kind of diagonal cut, which I, which I certainly struggled with and it wasn't throwing the peg out it was kind of popping the peg gently and, and setting it down which was actually uh, surprising and, and good it was an effective cutter it wouldn't be my recommendation for like a competition cutter or something like that if you're doing uh, you know substantial amounts of tamashigiri kind of stuff then this is probably not the right profile but as a practice piece and as something to cut pool noodles and practice your form with it's a perfectly sufficient tool and so much is right on here the nakago the ito being tight the fit and finish so much of that often gets missed or or you know one thing comes together and others are sacrificed the saya binds but the handles tight or the handles you know, loose and terrible, but the Saya fits well. And and really, this is a pretty a pretty good package overall. The blade is beautiful and seems to be well done. It's not flawless, but overall, it's got more right than wrong. Uh, the fit and finish on the Saya doesn't rattle. It's tight. It doesn't fall out. The placement of the Kurigata is right. Everything seems reasonably tight, but can be taken apart for cleaning. The Nakago is nice. The Ito is tight, and everything is, is not falling apart. There's not one glaring thing that, that needs work here, which is... Uh, which is great. I can nitpick about, you know, the, the material here or the ledge here or, you know, maybe the shape here. But overall, I think they, they got a lot right on here. Anyway, uh, 
that's really all I have for you. I'm not going to cut any more. Scott wants this back, and I want to be a, a gracious host to the sword and, and use it a little bit. But it is worth pointing out that I haven't really done much with this sword. I have taken it out of the box, and then I have made this video. <laughs> and that's the extent of, as of recording this, that I have had with this sword. And usually when I do these reviews, I like to spend you know, like a month doing Yaido with it, put it through some paces or at least several rounds. And I haven't done that here. I'm pretty confident though, that my, you know, my initial impressions here are, are going to hold up and I would probably only find more nitpicky things to either bitch about, but it's entirely possible. I would find something that I really, really like about it. Initially, I kind of complained about the Koshi Sori, for example, but in holding it up in the right light, uh, I'm starting to, to like it a little bit more already. So I, I have um, I would guess that I would find more right about this sword than wrong in general. So while this is rushed, I think still my, my opinion would likely grow rather than rather than decline. So anyway, that's that's all I've got. It is just a worth worthwhile thing to point out that I haven't spent a lot of time. I hope I get a chance to, to play with one of these again in the future, maybe for a little longer. Uh, but as it stands, it, it seems like a, a very good product. Anyway, special thanks again to Sword Friend Scott for sending me this sword to look at and to share with you. I hope it's been helpful. I have certainly enjoyed it. My impressions of Huawei are, are rather high, and I, and I would put them kind of right in the, the top line of places to buy from after this experience. I'm really, I'm really kind of moved by a lot of the things that are right here. So anyway, hopefully the video has been helpful. As always, cheers, and thanks for watching.